So this is my original Game Boy Zero, uh, which I built a few months ago, and it's basically an old Game Boy, gutted out, and a Raspberry Pi 1 computer uh, installed in it. Um, and I'm running um, Emulation Station, uh, and it's the, it's the RetroPie project that allows you to run multiple emulators. Uh, as you can see, this is a, uh, a Mega Drive emulator here running Sonic. Um, let's just get rid of that a second. Um, and it's a great little project. I mean, the thing about it is that, you know, you, could, you haven't got much room inside uh, an old uh, Game Boy to fit um, uh, a full-size Raspberry Pi in there. So everybody's dealing with Raspberry Pi Zeros now. Uh, my original intention was to put a Raspberry Pi 3 inside here, which is the same size as a, a Raspberry Pi 1. And, and I wound up taking the network and USB ports off the Raspberry Pi 1. And I made a video about that, and I'll link it below, and you can see, see how that was all done. But uh, I'm just going to put that to one side and show you what the subsequent project was. Here it is. This is based on a, a Sega Game Gear, which is a slightly more a later uh, sort of pocket console from the late, early 90s, um, uh, and uh, much bigger, uh, you know, much more space to fit things in, larger battery, etc. cetera. And, uh, and I, this, this, this one is built around a, uh, a, a Raspberry Pi 3, and consequently, it's much pokier. So, you know, you've got the example, you can, you can, you can emulate some Nintendo 64 games, not all. GoldenEye, which is the, the standard, doesn't seem to play very well, but things like Mario Kart, Mario Golf play very nicely. Um, Star Fox, etc., um, and uh, you've got all the usual ports, uh, you know, Quake and Doom and Duke Nukem and things like that, uh, and uh, and even PSP, although PSP does not play well. Uh, and the thing about those those processor hungry um, uh, emulators is that they, uh, they they tend to cause the the Raspberry Three to overheat a little bit, so you can't kind of play them for very long. But anyway, I'm very pleased how this one's turned out. Uh, and there's a few things which um, I kind of discovered in this build, which I hadn't really um, uh, done in the in the previous build. Uh, and 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 principally, um, uh, you know, there's a couple couple of them I'm going to detail now. Um, the um, uh, the controller uh, card that I use, so 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 the the, the thing that allows that that you know the the, the X Y pad and the, and the one two and uh, so the A B and they're marked one two on the on the on the Game Gear, but the A B and the X Y buttons and the shoulder buttons up here, you can see I've got little little um, tactile switches up here. The thing that the the, the 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 piece that allows those to work um, in in the two builds I've done so far has been uh, gutting out these um, cheap little um, you know kind of uh, ten pound ten dollar type boards. Uh, Type controllers you can get on eBay, and literally just taking the board out, and and reusing the little chip on board that you can see on there, sort of like you know, masticed over there, um, as as a USB input to the Raspberry Pi three, and that and that works really quite well. Um, the nice thing about about this style, and I don't know, I mean these things are unbranded, you know that they come from eBay for no money, um, but this one which has got the purple buttons and it's slightly more like an old school Sega uh, Game Gear pad, um, uh, uh, worked out better than this model. And this is the one I gutted to use in the original um, Game Boy project. The nice thing about this um, uh, board is that uh, not only um, does it have testing uh, pads. At every single uh, button point on the on on the controller, which makes it very easy to wire to, um, but it's a lot more sensitive. So, for example, with this, the, the, whatever whatever you know chip they use inside this guy, um, I had to be able to get you know lower than 10 ohms of, of resistance on the on the strip board uh, control board that I, that I that I cut out and put into the into the game gear case to be able to get reliable key pushes this one uh, you seem to be able to have just a, you know a few hundred ohms a killer ohm and and and, and the chip on there is a lot, lot more sensitive and seems to be able to sense the bus, button pushes a lot better uh, so so that was a, a big discovery that, that using the right one of these um, uh, controllers uh, makes things a lot better and as I say the the fact that there are that, that there are testing points for every single button on here makes it a lot easier. This one also has a common earth across all the buttons, whereas this one doesn't. It nearly does, but two or three of the buttons are wired in a kind of strange star fashion. So that was not a pleasant uh, thing to have to repurpose, whereas this was dead easy. And if you if you look at these photos of inside the build as it was going along, you can see that the, the board fits very nicely under the bottom of the screen, uh, next to the two um, copper strip boards that I had to uh, use uh, to replace my, my button boards. In essence, I could have, I suppose, butchered the... Um, uh, the existing um, Game Gear uh, PCBs, uh, but I needed to be able to drill out for the two um, XY buttons, and um, I needed to be able to make provision as well for the, the shoulder buttons, and a, um, 
uh, a select button. So obviously you have start and you have select, which a Game Gear never had. Now I have seen builds online where people have managed to get hold of a set of Game Gear buttons and they've put the select button on this side in exactly the same position. It looks great, but I kind of saw that um, uh, uh, after I started building, doing this build. So I'm kind of pleased the way the buttons worked out on this. They're much more reliable than on the old uh, Game Boy build where, where you have to use some force and occasionally they, they don't register properly and such. So that was one sort of disappointment with this thing. If you, if you look hard, because it's quite a scene, but if you look hard online, if you look on eBay and places like that, uh, you can find all of the replacement kind of um, uh, you know rubber pads with a carbon material for making contacts to the board. Uh, you know you can get all of them for, for, for almost no money. And uh, you know if you can every time you every time you pull apart a uh, a, a controller, you kind of keep all the buttons in that because you don't know when they'll come in useful. And uh, Places like Pseudomod and, and other forums are great places for getting the kind of the button wells, which you need to make sure that when you put new buttons onto an existing chassis, like those two guys there, they work reliably. They they push down and they and they and they and they hit the tracks on your on your copper um, strip board reliably. The other the other aspect of this that I'm really quite pleased about was was how to um, get um, uh, status lights working properly because there's several things you want to know about you want to know if well if the power's on it's kind of obvious because the screen's on but when you're charging when has the battery charged and also as the battery runs down when are you getting close to the thing turning itself off and I know a lot of people run a script which will um, force um, uh, the little build of Linux on this to, 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 for, to, to shut down uh, when it's done but um, I kind of like to have a, uh, a status light up here so you can see that the status light that's currently showing uh, uh, blue but uh, the way um, I've I've done this internally, the um, uh, the. the the, the, the Adafruit PowerQuest uh, 1000C board, uh, which is a brilliant little board for these kinds of projects, not just kind of, uh, you know, console type projects, but for other things. It sits just down here. And uh, and there's no way you could really sensibly get the LEDs to show down here without really mullering the case. And in fact, I kind of did it, um, uh, you, you know, with this uh, one here, but it's a bit too ghetto. And uh, you can kind of see there's the blue LED there. And when the, the LED, when the power starts to go down, I can see the red LED through there. And then there's the charging LED through there. And it's not great. Um, it is a bit too a bit too ghetto for my liking. Um, and so uh, with the uh, with the Game Gear build, I decided I was going to do something a bit nicer. And so as you can see, there's these uh, little plastic light pipes that run from the back of the Adafruit um, uh, through the um, uh, case. And you can see them there. You might just be able to see the, the blue illumination leaking out of one of them. And and they go to their peer in the same place on the, the game gear where it would have had um, its original uh, power LED. So that was a really nice kind of touch. I was very pleased the way that worked out. Speaking about the, 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 the hookup wiring and all that kind of stuff, I've seen a few people asking on the... Um, a couple of the forums that I hang out on. I mean, Pseudomod is just the best place to go for all this stuff. But also there's some great Facebook um, uh, groups. It's a Facebook group called um, uh, RetroPie Handhelds, where people talk about these builds. And a question that often comes is, what kind of wire you should use? Well, for power wires, I tend to use what in, like I'm a broadcast engineer, what we call in broadcasting is this uh, kind of crone, crone hookup wire, or jumper wire it's often called. And this is a solid uh, core um, uh, wire and it comes in numerous colours. I've got sort of a bag of different colours here, but uh, useful for doing the power hookups because you want you, you want to know that you you know you can reliably take that five volts and probably an amp, uh, you know when when the machine's booting up of, of current. But then for all the kind of hookups for the um, the controller and the audio board and such, this Kynar wire, which you can kind of buy in five meter. 20 different color rolls on, on eBay for a few pounds is ideal because it's very flexible and it's very easy to dress around the innards of, of, of the machine and produce quite a nice result. The machine I was most pleased about being able to emulate was the uh, the Spectrum because I was a you know, kind of child of the 70s and the 80s, started getting computers in the late 70s and by the time the Spectrum came out in the uh, in the early 80s, um, you know, having a machine that was a, a good kind of um, gaming machine was fantastic. And uh, so I've got a few of, of my favourite old classic Spectrum games on here. And uh, yeah, I can put a load more on. Um, uh, but, uh, uh, you know, Lunar Jetman was the uh, was the follow-up to um, Jetpack. Uh, and I was a big fan of those uh, back in the day. And the thing about most of these emulators, if you have the choice and under emulation station as to which emulator to associate with each game and you tend to find that for these little handheld builds where the assumption is it's only a controller that you can, can use to control the game 
um, you should really be looking for um, uh, an emulator that starts off LR-Libretto, uses the Libretto core, and so is, is, is built as an emulator to work with the you know, um, A, B, X, Y, um, up, down, left, right, start, and uh, select, and, and the two, the two um, uh, paddles uh, you know, underneath your fingers up there. Um, there's a lot of games, particularly Quake and things like that, where it just ass assumes you've got a proper computer keyboard. And so on a little build like this, that's kind of impossible. Now, the nice thing about the Spectrum emulator is that uh, uh, you can bring up a, a keyboard and force kind of key input. So if I want to select the, um, no, I want to select a cursor joystick, which is what uh, this will emulate. Um, uh, and, and, and then um, I can, I can uh, start the game by going to, is that a six to start the game? There we go. And uh, yeah, it's the old classic. And uh, it's kind of hard to play this uh, whilst concentrating on talking. So, uh, the hours of fun, reliving my youth, all the games that I used to enjoy as, enjoy as a teenager. And they're all in there. Manic Miner, who could forget that?